Hi everyone. So I'm stopping by today just to show you some products that I picked up from the new Doodlebug Christmas release. And I thought I'd show you this, these different items and then we could maybe make a couple of cards together. So let's just dig right in and take a look at what I picked up. So first I got several of these Doodle Pops. They're little cardstock stickers. So I got this adorable little gingerbread man and candy cane in a mug. And as you can see, it's like 3D. And the little gingerbread man is like a puffy sticker as is the candy cane. And they're in this adorable little mug. I think that'd be a perfect embellishment for a card. I also picked up this little gingerbread cardstock sticker. Again, they're called Doodle Pops. And we have this great little dimensional gingerbread house and some little hearts as well. This heart is dimensional. This heart is just a flat sticker. And again, I think it's gonna look really cute on a card. And it also coordinates really nicely with the Doodlebug pattern paper for Christmas, as well as their new stamp and die set. So I'm gonna show you all that. I also picked up these little tiny trees, Braddies. I just love these. They're little um, tiny, like I think they're enamel almost. Let's pull it out and see exactly what it is. So they're, yeah, they're like a hard plastic little Christmas tree and it has a cute little garland on it. And then the little star, that's a little rhinestone on top. And you can attach these to your cards. They're little brads. So that's what the fastener looks like. And I just think this is adorable. I think it'd be really fun to put this on a card, maybe in the center of a bow um, to, to add some real ribbon to a card. I think that would be pr a pretty way to use these braddies. Um, I also picked up these jelly clips. They're so adorable. They're little paper clips that have these little embellishments on top. So we have a little cupcake, a little elf girl, a little elf boy. And then again, the mug with the gingerbread man and the candy cane. And that matches this doodle pop sticker. I just love how everything is so matchy matchy with the doodle bug collections. Um, and the way I see using this is in a card that I'll send to my niece and nephew, and maybe I'll attach um, like a little, a little image or some images for them to color as well, like inside a card so that they'll get this cute little card and then they'll also be able to color along with their own um, little stamped images that I'll include with that. So really cute. I also got some little stickers as well. They're called shape sprinkles and they're little puffy stickers. So I got these gingerbread men and little gumdrops on the left. And then we have these different peppermint candies in pink and red and yellow and green and like a light turquoise blue as well. And all the colors coordinate so nicely together. Just love that. I think it'd be fun to add to maybe as a closure to an envelope, or maybe if you're making a little Candyland theme card or a gingerbread card, you could add these as embellishments for that. I also have these little holly and pine shaped sprinkles. These are also some glossy puffy stickers. And I love that you could use this to make a wreath if you like. You could use it to just make little sprigs of holly that you could decorate your cards with. And we have little holly berries. And then also these tiny little, like they look like little baubles, like little clear plastic bubbles almost that are pinkish in color. And you could either use those to make a different kind of holly or maybe just as embellishments around your sprigs of holly. So just so cute, I love these. Now let's take a look at the stamp and die set. So earlier this year, Doodlebug started releasing stamps and dies to match um, all their great paper products. And I am just in love with this set. This one is called Santa's Sweets. And it has, I guess that's a little um, like Christmas cake, a candy cane, a gingerbread man, a little cupcake. We have a little, um, 
collection of, of sweets here. So we have a candy cane, a peppermint lollipop, another gingerbread man, and then maybe like a little sprig of holly there. Another lollipop, some more gumdrops, and then I adore this gingerbread house. I think this is gonna be the first thing that I color and look how nicely that matches. Almost, um, it's almost the same size as well with the little doodle pop gingerbread house sticker as well. And then we have again, another little like Christmas cinnamon roll and some great sentiments like you're sweet from our house to yours and then hello sugar. There's also a little to and from if you wanna make gift tags with these little stamps. And then of course there are the accompanying dies. And what's great about these are there aren't those little, um, the, the little pokey things that you poke yourself with. You don't need to cut them apart. They're already pre-cut for you. So you can just um, cut this package open and you're ready to go stamping and die cutting your little images. And then I also got two rolls of the washi tape for Christmas. So this red one is the candy stripe and I just love that. One of my favorite washi tapes is probably this black and white tuxedo stripe that I got from I think a summer release and I use it often and I just think that this red and white candy stripe is a great addition. Be nice to cover to close envelopes with this for the holidays maybe you could use it as a decoration on your cards as well. I end up using washi tape for um, storage purposes like as closures on my little plastic folders that I use to store my stamps and dies in. That's probably the main thing that I use it for. We also have this little boughs of holly washi tape and this one is so cute. It has like a little garland of I guess little holly berries and they're pink and red and yellow. And again, you could use that as a decoration on your cards or envelopes and the two tapes match really, really nicely together if you wanted to layer them. And then last but not least is this six by six Christmas magic paper pad. I just love the doodle bug paper pads for Christmas. I look forward to it every year. And this year is no disappointment. I just love these um, little pattern papers that they have. So in the pa paper pack, you'll get 24 double-sided um, pieces of pattern paper and you get double. So I guess it's 48 sheets total. And let's just take a look and see what the patterns are. So we have little Santa Claus faces. I think this pattern is actually was used in a previous um, it might be from the Milk and Cookie stamp set. We also have this one, which has lots of little doodles on it. It's a tone on tone, little gingerbread men, candy canes, Christmas ornaments, etc. I think I saw this one in a previous release, maybe in different colors. We have some plaid, some little tags here. I guess so you can make like a shopping list. Um, or you could just use this to decorate a card, some little yellow stars, a little advent calendar. So this is adorable. So you could use this to make your own advent calendar, um, which would be a lot of fun. You could like make maybe like a shaker type card um, and then maybe make the little windows pop up. I don't know, I have to think about how to um, turn this into an advent calendar or you could just use portions of it to um, decorate a card as well. I think that would look nice. And again, all the images coordinate with all the things that we've previously seen and the stickers and the doodle pops and the stamp set. This one is one of my favorite sheets. I just love that. I love the pink. I love the little gingerbread people and the cupcakes. It's just so fun and whimsical. Then we have some little rainbow polka dots, some little hearts. So this is adorable. We don't usually see hearts at Christmas time, but I think it's, this is perfect. Um, I think it could make a pretty gift tag. Maybe like you could have a white gift tag and the, the bottom of it, maybe you could have a few rows of hearts. I think that would be a pretty idea for a gift tag. We have these little reindeer. Sorry, I keep flipping this every which way, but the, I wanna show you the pattern paper right side up. 
So you have these little reindeer. And I think it would be fun on a card maybe to take a Nouveau drop and maybe like um, put in a few Rudolphs here and there just to spice things up a little bit, make it fun. You could also add little dots of snow um, with maybe uh, tiny drops of Nouveau drops. This pattern paper are all little elves. So I love the little girls and the little boys and they have different colored hats and there are some presents and sweets and it's just so sweet. And then we have, and these are probably my favorite pages in the Doodlebug pattern paper sets. I love that you can cut out these borders. It makes it really, really fun if you just want to make a card that is just totally pattern paper pieced together where you don't have to stamp or color. So I do that a lot with layering the different pattern papers and then adding these as borders for a sentiment um, or just to help decorate. And these are all like great little borders you could use. You could also just cut it all together and maybe have a card with all of them across, but I like to cut them out individually and just use them as borders on cards. We also have these little gift tags, which I love. So these are really, really fun um, ways to decorate your cards. You can cut out each of these little gift tags. You can even take a paper punch and maybe put some twine through the tag, add it to your card. You could also, as you see on the back here, so on the back you, you can actually make a to and a from to make a little gift tag. So you have a, black, a blank tag on the back and then on the front you would have your um, your little sentiment or saying on the front of the gift tag. So really cute. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, I guess 18 of them. So you can get 18 gift tags just by cutting apart this one piece of paper. And it is doubled up, so you could have 36 gift tags with this pattern paper pack. I love these stripey borders. And I love these pink and white polka dots, really cute. The holly berries are great as well. And look at how perfectly that that matches little puffy stickers. So adorable. And then we have some more holly. We have some gingerbread people. I think I remember this pattern paper from another release. This um, gingham pattern, which is a little unexpected for Christmas with the yellows, but I love it. Some rainbow. Um, rainbow polka dots and then Christmas trees. Let me show you these right side up. So great little Christmas trees. So cute. It would be fun to maybe again add some glossy accents to the little baubles. Maybe if you wanted to dress it up a little bit. I think this card would be great if you just dressed up the little um, the star and the little baubles, and then maybe had like one of the sentiment strips as a, as a sentiment, you could make a pretty, pretty quick card that also looks kind of cute by just doing those two things. We have some more little Christmas trinkets in this one. So we have all different bells and little Christmas ornaments, really cute. And then the last pattern are, is this great candy cane stripe. And I just love this. And I love that we get two sheets of it in this paper pack. So those are all the items that I picked up. There are definitely more from the Doodlebug Christmas release, but I thought that this was good enough to get me started on my Christmas card making using some Doodlebug items. And I am gonna go ahead and get to work. And, and to start, I'm just going to take the Santa's Sweets stamp set by Doodlebug and I'm just going to arrange the images on a piece of Express It blending card in my Misty and Express, Express It blending card is my favorite card stock for Copic coloring. You get really really nice blends with this paper and I also feel it takes up less ink than maybe the Nina Solar White card stock which is also another good card stock for Copic coloring. I'm going to stamp everything with a Copic friendly ink. This is Memento Black ink. This is my go-to ink for Copic coloring. Make sure I get a good impression and then we can start coloring everything up. Now before I start talking about the coloring I just wanted to let you know that tonight I'm going to be 
premiering a 10 cards, one kit card making tutorial for the Studlebug Christmas items that we saw earlier in this video. So what is a premiere you ask? Well, a premiere is when instead of usually with my YouTube videos, I'll just publish them um, whenever and then you can watch them whenever you like. With a premiere, the first time the video plays, it's at a set time and then you get to watch along with others and a chat box will open and you can chat with others while the video is playing for the first time. So during that first playing, you I don't think you can speed up. I think you may be able to rewind if, if you want, but the idea is to have the excitement of watching the video in real time with others and then talking about it. I will be online at that time answering any questions that you might have about the techniques in the video or anything at all. I, you wanna ask me about card making or, or anything. So it's a chance for us all to get together for about 20 minutes or so. So I'm thinking that this 10 cards, one kit video, I still need to edit it and, and get everything ready by 9 p.m. Central tonight, but I will, I will get it done. It'll probably be around 20 to 30 minutes. So it gives us a nice amount of time to just kind of chat a little bit. And um, I did a premiere for the first time last Saturday night and it was really fun. Um, my mom joined. So if you want to get a chance to meet my mom, you can meet her in the chat, I'm sure. And you can just talk with all the others that you see commenting on my videos and other card maker videos from time to time. You can just kind of grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee or whatever your beverage of choice is and just kind of sit back and watch and then chat with others. All right. So now let's get back to the coloring. So we're working on the gingerbread house now and I sped the gingerbread house coloring up really, really fast. So once we get through the gingerbread house, it'll go back to a more normal speed, although still a little bit sped up. I did that because the gingerbread house just took a lot of time and I didn't want you to get bored watching the, the same thing over and over again. Um, so for the gingerbread house, I use primarily my E30s, which I think is a nice color for like chocolatey or, or cookie things, baked goods. For this little cupcake here, I'm coloring in the icing with some E20s. And then the cherry, I used R12, no, YR12 for my highlight color. It's like a yellow orange color. And then R24, 29, and 39. Um, I thought it would be fun to make this a yellow cake or a butter cake. So I used some yellow Copic colors for the cake part. And then for the little foil on the cupcake, we're gonna use some greens. And what I tried to do is as I pulled colors out, I kept them on my desk just so that I would keep using the same colors over and over again. So if I wanted to make something green, then I would go to the same greens over and over again instead of um, picking out different colors each time with the idea that I wasn't sure how I'm gonna use these stamps on my cards yet. And I just wanted to make sure that they'd all be um, able to mix and match well with each other. And you can do that by just having similar, your items or your images colored in similar ways. And I had so much fun coloring in the images from this stamp set. I am so happy that Doodlebug has started um, releasing stamp and die sets to go along with its products. Um, I've always loved all the, the paper products by Doodlebug. And one of the areas where I struggled with card design was just sometimes it can be difficult, at least I feel it's difficult to make a card that is just completely um, paper pieced. I usually like to have some stamped image. So now Doodlebug has solved that problem for me because now I can not just have all the great little papers from Doodlebug, but also the stamp sets as well to kind of personalize um, the little images on my cards. So now I'm coloring in this little cluster of candies and we're gonna make a little red peppermint. I'm gonna use my reds, the same reds we've been using over and over. And then there's a little holly berry and uh, a little gumdrop. We're gonna make a gumdrop pink. And my favorite, one of my favorite pink combinations is RV52 and then 55. And then for the shadow tone or the darkest tone, I'll usually use like an RV 17 or a 19. Um, for this little holly sprig, I'm using a combination of some yellow greens and greens for that. 
for the lollipop, our little peppermint lollipop. Um, I used some light turquoise colors there. And then the holly sprigs, we're just going to use some green. So I started with G03. And then my darkest color will be this G28. And then we'll blend it all together with some G07. And then one of the tricks that I like to do is when I have a really dark image, I'll take a very, very light shade in that same color family. In this case, I use G00 and I'll just run it across the center of the object just to um, give it a little bit of a pop, take some of the ink away. I find that I like to use the lightest color in the color family, like one of the 00 or 000 um, series in Copics instead of just using a colorless blender. Sometimes the colorless blender can take away too much color. So that's why if I want to take away color, I'll usually try to take just a really, really light marker that has much less pigment or color in it than the others. It get, gives a nicer blend, I find. And it's also one of the benefits of having those Copic 000 or 0000 markers, which I know sometimes I struggle to use those. I don't really use the um, 0000s that much unless I'm making a really, really pale background or if I'm trying to take ink away from, um, from an image like here. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to our little Christmas cake. I think this is my favorite image of all of the all little sweets here, probably because it's um, the, the little sweet that I would most like to eat. I'm a big fan of chocolate cake with, we're going to give this little guy vanilla icing. So that's probably my favorite sweet combination. And I'm just going to leave the center pretty light there just to make the object look rounded. Then we're going to go to the gumdrops and to some more holly leaves with some YGs. And again, I'm leaving the centers pretty light just to help make them look rounded and just dimensional and interesting. And then my darkest shade here is gonna be the YG17. So on some of the greens, my darkest shade was YG17 if I want it to be a little more yellow green and if I want it more green, then I use the G28. And I guess I went over and added some G28 to this little cinnamon roll we're coloring in now. For the cake part, I used Y21, YR24, Four, and then Y23 and Y27. So a lot of YR markers there just to get the perfect color of a, a butter cake. Although I guess you wouldn't have butter cake with a cinnamon roll. It'd be like that puff pastry, but this one, maybe it was cooking in the oven a little bit too long. For the vanilla icing, I am using some W, some warm grays, just to give a little bit of dimension to the to the white of the frosting. I'm just going along the edges and underneath the areas where there's like a little cherry or a little leaf sitting on top. And then I'm using my double zero zero in the centers just to lighten everything up. And I'm gonna do the same on the white spots around the candy canes and then also around the little peppermint lollipop, just cause I find that pure white can be a little bit boring looking, but if you just add a little pop of gray, um, it looks, it just makes it come to life. Now I'm adding some details with my white gel pen. It's mostly just little dots I'm placing here and there, whether it be in the frosting or um, a little, some little dots on the cherries just to add a little highlight. And then we're gonna add some little like sugar, sugary sprinkles to our gingerbread house in a second. I've been loving that look on gingerbread this season of just putting what looks like a whole bunch of snow or a whole bunch of confectioner sugar just sprinkled all over the gingerbread area. So we're going to do that now with uh, the gingerbread house. And whenever I find that my white gel pen is starting to not work well, I just kind of um, smack it on, on, on a piece of paper next to me like I just did there. I'll just not smack it, like tap it a few times. And that's usually enough to get the ink flowing again. This gel pen is towards the end of its life, so I'm probably going to replace it by the next time you see me with a gel pen in a video. Um, but I do like to keep gel pens of varying, um, 
a, a varying ink levels around because depending on how juicy it is or how dry it is, I might have different uses for it. So a dry gel pen is really good when you want to add very light or thin or faint highlights. Sometimes a fresh gel pen is so juicy that it can, when you go to write with it, it can make your highlights look kind of um, just cartoonish or just too thick and dark. So one of the benefits of keeping a gel pen that is near the end of its life around. And so these are our little images. So I am going to go get back to work and make the remaining cards for tonight's video. And here are some sneak peeks of the cards that I'm going to show you how to make tonight during my 10 cards card making video that will be premiering at 9 p.m. Central right here on this channel. I hope to see you later on everyone. Have a great day.